In this video, I'm drawing, painting rather, a photograph of my own garden, um, sweet peas and roses and a few, fuchs a few fuchsias there in my garden. And um, I'm just doing it on a bog standard canvas. I think it's 30 by 40 centimetres. And I start just by um, preparing the cooler shades to the and darker shades to the more um, sunlit uh, parts of the uh, foliage and garden so you, you can see some quite definite um, yellowy green leaf and foliage compared to the in the shadow areas um, behind in the hedgerow and underneath this little table area on the left there's some darker cooler shadows so I'm just really mapping those out at this stage. I'm just using Windsor and Newton oil paints, uh, which I loosen with, as you would um, use water with watercolours, I'm just using it to loosen the paint so that I can get a um, thinner coat underneath, which is almost a drawing really of the tones and the shadows and the uh, warmer sunlit areas um, so and as I go through the painting I will reduce the amount of linseed oil to the point where I'm just really plopping on um, just paint so um, beware not to put too much oil if you wet it's not like watercolor if you put too much oil on your canvas you're not going to get any paint to stick at all so as you can see, I'm just putting in then um, some more forms in blocks, such as the table area and the planters, which are very discreet, really, in the painting. My go to green for most foliage, actually, is a sap green. And I use the sap green and I can um, cool it down using blue and warm it up using yellow or white because it is naturally more of a yellowy green so you can just use white to you can either use it as it, uh, on its own or you can obviously warm it up a bit more with some yellow or white the cooler areas we can gray with blacks and not too much black because that deadens the painting but blues certainly even cerulean blues and so a cerulean blue is a warmer blue but you can still cool your green with it and then for a for a <laughs> it sounds crazy but a a warmer cool green if you know what i mean and for a cooler green then you could add something like a french ultramarine blue and the very darkest areas um you can see in the top left um, of the photograph, if you look, they're actually almost just plain blue, those shadows, um, with a touch of black maybe, but they're really quite blue. So I, I must, my disclaimer here with this painting is because when I finished it, I couldn't, I thought the colour was, was off actually for my taste. But I am really struggling adjusting to painting with the lights. I find I really, to get the light for you to be able to see on the video, I can't see the canvas, if that makes sense. It kind of bleaches the canvas from my point of view, although it records a lot better for you so I am really struggling to adjust to that I don't know how other artists do it perhaps I must ask one of them um, on these YouTube videos um, yeah so I really did struggle with that I felt the colours were lacking somewhat by the time I'd finished the painting but that's me I know <laughs> I always do this with my paintings I'm always like oh I wish I'd done this or that now on that note one thing I do wish I'd done more is the uh, I wish I'd had more impasto on this painting. I may, I have been toying with the idea, and I always say this as well, of going back and going over it with some more impasto strokes because um, I really wanted a more buttery appearance to the finished uh, paint and the finished picture painting. So um, 
and that's that's just up to me I, I i was painting this rather late at night and i did get quite tired i'm always doing that i need to stop doing that but that's just my life because i do the gardening in the day and then the painting at night and i just do get quite tired so um and then really i didn't really want to be adding flowers until i'd got until i was really sure of the form of the shadows the lights the darks the greens and when you're doing a landscape like this, it really is just a case of building up the layers and the textures. Because in this painting, in, in my actual garden, there's a, the, where that little table is on the left, that white table, there's a patio there. There's a row of pots which you can't see, but um, coming so that where you've got that big leaf at the bottom, that's a gladioli. Um, and then you've got the pot that's actually a path going round to the back which doesn't show in the photograph but what it sh what and then behind is a rose hedge and in between and uh, are the sweet peas and all their foliage and then you've got another hedge at the back so there are several layers of different plants and foliage and they all have their own colors and they all catch the light in different ways and one of the only ways you can really capture that is by just constantly building up the colours and breaking down the shapes. So you start off, as I did in the beginning, with your just blocks. I want the dark bits over here and the light bits over there in blocks. And then you're just constantly breaking them down and dotting in um you know, lights and darks here and there. And you just keep doing that until you've built up this, um, these layers of foliage um, that can be seen, um, you know, you're tricking the eye so that it looks like there's all these sort of forefront and distance and shadows and glitters, um, glinting sun on some of the leaves. So, um, it really, this painting really is just that over and over again until I get the result that I want. I did add, I did cheat and add a few more flowers <laughs> because actually I know that my garden has more flowers than it did in that photograph. I did like that photograph, but that photograph was taken, I think, for one of my gardening videos. So I, um, I just needed one um, in the moment and I know that wasn't um, with the most flowers. I, I do have more flowers. Uh, for instance, the roses, roses had passed and there, there wasn't so many of those as there normally are. And the sweet peas were only just coming through. So there was less of those. So um, I did cheat and just improvise and add a few more flowers there. So some other colours I used are the Cerulean Blue and the French Ultramarine Blue. I used the Cadmium Yellow to warm up the greens and some of the little dots of flowers up over there. Um, the Cadmium Yellow also uh, warmed up some of the Gladioli leaves down in the bottom left. They're the, the sort of the more, uh, the thicker sort of almost like grass-like leaf at the bottom left there. I, did I say French and ultramarine blue? I can't remember if I did, but I used that. Also, the orange is just a mixture of cadmium red. No, actually, I didn't have any cadmium red, so I did use permanent rose and the cadmium yellow to make a bit of an orangey colour. Uh, the pink is quinacridone magenta, which is one of my favourite colours um, for flowers. Uh, the the more ready colour was the permanent rose. I used some blue on the, see the white roses on the right there. I used some of the blue, which I'd grayed down a bit, to go underneath the roses to suggest a little bit of cool shadow under those. As, as you know, when you look at a, a white rose, it does tend to have quite a bit of blue in it. This is a little chug, which I actually pan painted myself, actually. I wasn't going to put it in and then I thought, ah, oh, yeah, no, I'll put it in. It kind of makes quite a sweet detail. And yeah, as I say, now is just really a question of breaking up, breaking up, adding the layers, um, re-emphasizing re the darks, getting the value range right. So that's quite an important thing. 
you, your value range is so if you look for instance under the table and some of the back of the hedges it's very dark almost bordering on black and then your lightest lights would be say the white roses or whatever so your value range is any range between there of darks and lights so you you know uh, progressing from the darkest dark to the lightest light which is the white roses and so you know to get that lay that um uh, um ah what's the word <laughs> the the feeling of depth the impression of depth then that range has got to be um paid attention to because um, that's what gives the depth to the painting and the feeling of life and you know a garden with all its various shadows and sun glinting uh, pathways and foliage and what have you so that's that's what you're always looking at and restating as you're breaking up the shapes so and as I break up the shapes you'll see the the um well I don't know what's wrong with my brain tonight sorry again I'm doing it too late I'm tired so do forgive me but um, as you're breaking up the shapes, uh, the darker masses, then you start to get the impression that you have all these leaves and foliage everywhere. And with these bamboo um, teepees that I use for the sweet peas, what I do is sort of block them in and then I just reassert the, the darkness between them so that it looks like sticks. I'm not like painting in separate sticks. So, I mean, that's how I paint. Some people are very, like very realistic painting, but this is, I just wanted an impressionistic sort of painting of my garden. I just remembered the photograph and I liked it. And I'm planting so many seeds at the moment. I can't wait for my flowers to come. So um, I just thought, oh, I'm going to paint that old photograph that I've got from last summer. And uh, these are all my sweet peas, which are, which I collected the seeds from. And which, if any of you watching this painting are interested in gardening videos, I don't know whether you are, but I also do those. And I collected the seeds from these sweet peas that I'm painting now. And I'm already growing them and they've already sprouted and they're already about, I don't know, 10 centimetres, maybe even 20 centimetres tall already, ready to go. I can't wait. It's so satisfying to know that I've uh, reproduced, I'm going to be reproducing these flowers um again this year anyway that's a little side note sorry about that you know I think I could waffle on all if you wanted to but I don't think there's any point I think as I say I'm just restating now the darks I'm not going to get into detail just breaking down the shapes adding some glints of sunshine restating those darks again because I will do it again it's a it's a constant thing to keep the depth in there my only regret as i say is that i is that i didn't have more impasto in this painting and that's why i think i prefer painting on board rather than canvas because the canvas doesn't absorb the paint so when you're putting on that layer on a board the boards that i use when i'm putting on that oily layer you know where i'm sketching everything out at the beginning that absorbs into the wood um or the MDF, <laughs> depending on what I'm using, depending on what my budget is. Um, but that, in a way, helps me. I like that. It's the same when I do my oil paintings on the oil paper because it absorbs it and then I can build up the impasto very quickly. Whereas on a canvas, it doesn't absorb it at all. It just sits there. And so if you started putting on too much paint, it would probably just slide off or something hideous it just it just doesn't glue on in the same way uh, in order to achieve that on a canvas I think I would have to do an undercoat and I think I would probably and that's why I say at the beginning I might go back to it when it's dry and just add some impasto to it if I'm in the mood um, but that's that's kind of why I like painting on the board because I think it's more effective uh, you're, it's it's easier to do that. See what I mean about restating the darks as I just did then, restating that pop of colour inside the chug there. Um, so, you know, maybe... Now, if you're a realist, you know, you would start putting in sharp lines and sharp details, sharpening everything up. That's not my intention usually when I'm painting. But there obviously, just to some extent, you have to do that in any painting. And that's, 
kind of where I'm at now. Trying to give the impression of the sweet pea tendrils going up there without sort of painstakingly painting everyone. You know, you just you just emphasize the dark or the the color in between those tendrils so that they stand out. Um, yeah, and, and, and I'll just keep doing this till the end. So I'll play out some music now. If you have any questions, I mean, I'm more than happy to help. So please do, don't hesitate to ask. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to see me paint anything or you have any ideas or, or there's anything you want to know, um, then please do get in touch. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please support my channel by subscribing or considering subscribing. And I do have all my supplies in my Amazon shop. I, I buy most of my stuff from Amazon simply because I'm so busy um, and it can just be delivered to my door. And so therefore, it, that, that's what gave me the idea of doing the shop, really, because I just thought, why not? Because you can pretty much get anything that I buy as well. So it is an affiliate link. So I think I get somebody bought something the other day and I got like 17p <laughs> for um, I can't remember. But anyway, what they bought. But um, so 17p, it's not a lot, but of course it does help me with the supplies and the time it takes to make these videos for you. And, you know, it just all offsets all the costs. So um, and I don't make any money from YouTube. So, you know, if, if you can help, that would be great by using the affiliate link. But if not, no biggie. Um, you know, you can subscribe or something instead. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you find these videos helpful um, because that's why I do them. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.